So we have with us Federal Constituency Honorable Satomi Alaji Hamad to give us his own insights on what happened. Could you share with us your experience? What did you hear? Because that's your own region. What exactly? Could you confirm the figures to us? What happened in the community and um, what, you, what reports you've gotten so far? Thank you very much. Actually, it was a sad day on Saturday. Uh, people of our community from the Marmari who are having their lawful businesses in their farmland in nearby village called Koshele at the board of Jerry Addis was attacked by Boko Haram. And then uh, up to this moment, as I am talking to you, I am right now inside the Marmari receiving condolences uh, from the senator representing the constituency, senatorial zone. 34 we buried inside the Marmari. Okay. And then nine was buried in farmland. Okay. Uh, in the bush. And then this morning, we have some figures, unconfirmed figures. Hmm. And just now, as I am speaking to you, uh, I learned that I was told there is about 30 more corpses yes. and even more that needs to be evacuated. The military, because of the waterlogged nature of the terrain, are looking for some tractors and heavy equipment to move into the farm to evacuate. Honorable. But, um, for so, so far, from our uh, figures, those people missing are over 70 so far. Yeah, missing. But the recovered corpse that was buried yesterday is uh, 34 and the 9 making 43. Good. Or, sure. Honorable, could you give us an idea the kind of security you have in that region? Do you have army? Do you have police? Do you have vigilante? Yeah. What, could you the army and the vigilante are there, but you know the farm land is outskirts of Zabarmari, and Zabarmari was relatively free for the for the first uh, couple of uh, months. Like uh, eight months, there was no attack in Zabarmari, and then the people have developed confidence that uh, things are normal and it's as usual. So, but the Boko Haram gathered them and then in a retaliation that they are giving information to military. I think this is what they say. And that's why they uh, practically and summarily executed uh, this uh, atrocity by slaughtering our people uh, on to unidentified actual people. But uh, from what we are receiving now, the figures are still increasing. This is not the first time that you know a, a village will be taken over by bandits, Boko Haram, or whatever these guys that they come in, in form of. And you know the federal government will come out and say some things. The last mm. one that happened, they even had the, the entire village set on fire and people killed, and it was reported just recently. If you you know, I think this year or late last year, and nothing concrete was done. Did you, did you have any further beef up of security? By the federal government in all these villages that you could sincerely see. It's not a time for an action. It's not the time for lamentation or it's not the time for saying that we will do A, B, or sorry, or condemn. It's time to re-strategize and look at the entire security architecture of the nation. Exactly. Would you call for the sake of the service chiefs? Honorable Saturday, Nigerians are calling for the sake of the service chiefs. Do you agree with them? This is it's not about searching of the service chiefs. What I am saying is overhauling the entire security structure, like restructuring it. Because what we are doing is obsolete. It's not about searching of the service chief. It's about how much we are prepared. Where is the political will hmm. for all the leaders, for us to wear our thinking back and to see how we are going to address this contemporary crisis at hand in the nation. Hmm. Ranging from the chief nursing and banditry, and then other form of uh, violence across the nation. It's not about fighting of the service chief, it's just one factor. Mm -hmm.